I'm J.V. Torres from The Rise of King of Silas, and you're listening to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. The following program was originally released January 23rd, 2008. Hello, everybody. I'm Hugo, the janitor. This is uh, Bells in the Bat for episode 63. There are a couple of things you need to know about before you listen to this show. If you don't know what cowlets are, you need to go listen to episode number five. Way back there. If you missed the first episode of the listener-written adventure, The Alternate Universe, then you need to go back and listen to episode 59. If all this homework's too much trouble, go listen to Comedy Forecast instead. (laughs) Okay, hit the music. I wrote some lyrics for the music. Here we go. Bells, bells, bells in the battery, 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 bells, bells, bells Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bells in the Bad Free. I think we should kick things off this time with a look at the world of science with Mr. Wizard. Hello, everybody. Well, hello, Billy. Hello, Mr. Wizard. Today, we're going to discuss two popular ways to detect if something is somewhere you can't see. Like yelling, is anything there? Nobody likes a cute kid, Billy. Mom, gag. One way to detect if something is where you can't see it is by using sound waves. Like yelling, is anything there? Yes. No. Like sonar. Sonar is a method of sending out a sound wave and listening for the echo. The echo tells you there's a solid mass in the path of your sound wave. Where did it get? a name like sonar. You're trying to trick me, aren't you? What? You don't think I know where the word sonar came from, and you're trying to trip me up. No, I... I happen to know that sonar is an acronym for sound, navigation, and ranging. That's sonar? That's sonar. No, it's not. What? That would be snar. S-N-A-R, snar. No, no. You use the S and O from sound. And why would you use your first two letters from one word and none of the others? That's just the way it's done. It should be snar. It's not. It's sonar. And I'm going to demonstrate how it works. I was your foy today. Let's say that I'm a submarine and Billy is another submarine. We can't see anything from inside our submarines, so we have to use sonar. Snar. Stop that. Since we can't see sound waves, we're going to do a dramatic recreation of how sonar works. I'm going to blindfold myself, like this. Now, I've got this gas-powered tennis ball shooter. Gas-powered what? The tennis balls represent the sound waves as I shoot them out. Ow! 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 I aim them in various positions until... Ow! Ah, one of the balls bounced back. Now I know which direction the other sub is. I can also calculate its distance and speed by hitting it several times. Ow! Ow! Oh! Ow! Now that I've done that, I can fire my torpedo. Glad you're not a real submarine. Which is represented by this gas-powered bowling ball launcher. Oh! Excellent. Sonar is very useful in water, but sound does not travel as well in the air. So a different system was created. It's called radar. I see him on MASH. I'll MASH you in a minute. Anyway, before you ask, radar stands for radio detection and ranging. Ritter. Stop that. Should be Ritter. I happen to have an actual radar set up here. I'm going to turn it on, and since there are no objects in the sky, it'll show us a clear field. However, once Billy climbs aboard this rocket ship I made out of old garbage cans. Mr. Wizard, there is something on your router screen. Then wipe it off and get into the can. No, a blip. A what? Blip. Look. Son of a gun. There should be no aircraft in this area. This is a UFO, an unidentified flying object. But it is identified. It is? Yeah, you just identified it as a UFO, meaning it's no longer unidentified. What did you put into your Bosco this morning, Billy? Anyway, lots of people think that just because an object is unidentified, that it's some sort of alien craft from another world. Nothing could be further from the truth. Then, what is that? Where? Up there. Son of a gun. It's an alien craft from another... (laughs) 
I'm caught in some sort of tractor beam. No, it's a UFO beam. Tractors have big tires and can't fly. Billy, help me. It's slowly pulling me up into the UFO. Yeah, I see that. You need to knock me free of this beam. Um, okay. Ow! Ow! Uh, that's not working. Help me. Help me. Gee, I'd like to, Mr. Wizard, but, uh... I don't see how I could possibly help. There's a long rope coiled up next to you. Uh-huh. So? Throw me a line! Oh, okay. Who is that lady I saw you with last night? The rope! The rope! Throw me the rope! You mean this rope here, Mr. Wizard? Yes! Throw it! Mm. You think it's long enough? It is now. If you wait too long, it may not be. Oh, you mean because you're slowly rising into the air, and if I waste too much time throwing you the rope, you'll rise beyond the length of the rope and possibly be lost forever in the endless cosmos? Yes! Throw the rope! This rope looks pretty scratchy. Are there any gloves down here? Throw me the rope. I'm almost there. Okay. Okay. Let me pick it up. On the count of ten. One. Two. Three. I know what comes next. No, I mean throw it on the count of three. Oh, okay. Good idea. That would be faster, wouldn't it? Throw it. On three. Yes. On three. One. Two, three. Two. Three. Three. Ugh. It bounced off the closed hat. And there goes the UFO. Son of a gun. Hello, Miss Mackelheimer. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Mr. Bell, can I come in? Oh, hi, Billy. Come on in. Is the Mr. Wizard segment over? I didn't hear the ending music there. No, it, it, well, actually, it kind of got interrupted. How's that? Well, you see, uh, Mr. Wizard got uh, abducted by aliens. I see. Mm-hmm. So, I guess you'll be needing a new assignment. Yeah, I guess I will. Okay, we'll just hang around for a while, and I'll find something for Okay, you. I'll go hang around your pool for a while. I'll see you later, Mr. Bell. Oh, Mr. Bell, you think the aliens might be using some of those probes that... One can only hope. Yeah, I guess you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yellow yeah, bells in the back. Mr. Bell, this is Arnie on the Econ Sport, your local resident genius. have come up with a great idea. I've got a television pilot. It's a reality show because the writers are on strike and all the TV networks are looking for reality shows. And I have a reality show. I'm about to do the very first episode live, so turn on the TV so you can watch. Gotta go. Bye. Free. Hmm, I guess I'll turn on the TV and see what's going on. Hello, everybody. I'm Arnie Kunspide, and welcome to the very first episode of Bucky the Plucky Cowlet. Bucky the Plucky Cowlet. That's Bucky. Watch him here each week. Every week, a special guest star will be in peril, and Bucky the Plucky Cowlet will save the day. Just watch. Bucky the Plucky Cowlet. Bucky the Plucky Hi, Ernie. I guess there's a reason that I'm uh, tied to this railroad track here. There certainly is, Raymond. <laughs> if uh -huh. you'll notice, the 602 is coming full steam down the track from that direction. It is? Oh. And over in the other direction, we have Bucky the Plucky Collie. Uh -huh. I'm going to run over to Bucky and I'm going to release him so he uh -huh. can rescue you just in the nick of time. Okay, well, if he could hurry it up, that train looks like it's uh, coming awful fast there. Okay, Bucky, let me take you off your leash here. Go to the rescue! Um, Bucky? Here, Bucky. Here, Bucky. Uh, you want to come over here a little faster? These whoops are really, uh, really tight. Bucky? Uh, Arnie? I've had second thoughts about doing this. I don't think, um... Can you come on time, me, please? Because some of you people, somebody over there, could somebody over there just on time, me, please? Can you uh, tell me the train's coming? The, the train is on the back! I 
like to thank Ray Romano for being such a great sport and appearing on today's show. Um, next week, um, our special guest in pair will be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or somebody. Thank you for watching. This has been Bucky the Plucky Collette. Bucky the Plucky Collette. Well, that was certainly a low point for everybody concerned. Mix your mouth and just see it, yes, just see it, yes, just see it. Yes. I think that great boy was exciting. It was good television. Well, there was also twenty-two minute shorts that the network had to fill quite a bit. Yeah. But I think it was really, really cool. What do you think? How? Uh, what do you well, think? How? Well, what do you think? What do you Arnie, think? Arnie, 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 it was very interesting television. I hope you get a contract out of it. But oh, uh, boy. there's one small mistake that you've been making that I didn't want to mention. Mr. Bell, I am a genius. I do not make. Mistakes. So you spray, Arnie, but uh, it's it's about Bucky. Bucky? Bucky the plucky cowlets. What about Bucky? Cowlets are girls. Oh, yeah, they're fully grown. They're men and women. No, no, I mean, all cowlets are female. All cowlets are female? Yes. Then where do little cowlets come from? Arnie, you see, there are male and female cowlets. It's just that only the female cowlets are called cowlets. I see. Well, assuming you're telling me the truth, what do they call a male cowlet? Bull. I knew it. I knew you were putting me no. on. I knew no, this no, no, just no. A pile no, no, of... no, 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 no. The, the males are called bulls and the females are called cows, or in this case, cowlets. Then that means that the males would be called... Bullets. bullets. Yes, I guess they would. So you're saying that we can only have baby cowlets if we don't run out of bullets. You're really confusing me now, Mr. Bell. All right, all right, let's get to the basics. Let's say you have a herd of cowlets. Well, of course I've heard of cowlets. No, I know you've heard of cowlets. They're called a herd of cowlets. You mean a bunch of cowlets. No, a bunch of cowlets is called a herd. Well, I heard that, Dan. Okay, let's say you want to have baby cowlets. I can't have baby Not you personally. Oh. You want your cowlets to have baby cowlets or calflets. Calflets? Okay, we want to have calflets. What do we do? This is where you need the bullets. I'm not going to shoot the cowlets, Mr. No, Bell. No, 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 no. Okay, look, um, Arnie... The bee flies from flower to flower. I don't have beelets, Mr. Bell. I don't know why you keep changing the no, subject no, no, like no, no, that. No, 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 no. Let's say that you've got little tiny chickens. Okay, I've got little tiny chickens. And you've got a lot of chicks. No, I just ate one girl, Griselda. No, I don't no. see why you're saying No, 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 no. Baby chickens are called chicks. Oh, well, what do they call little tiny full-grown chickens? Chicklets. Don't mind if I do. What flavor you got? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Keep your waitress. We'll be here all week. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Try carefully. Good night, everybody. Try the field. Don't try the field. Elizabeth the Plucky Cowlet, the most feminine in the herd. She knows that there's nothing faster than a spinning bullet. Arnie, this is getting absurd. I have to agree with you. Let's sing out. Elizabeth there. the Plucky. Elizabeth the Plucky. Elizabeth the Plucky. And feminine. Cowlet. Uh oh. Attention. Attention. Incoming listener script. Incoming listener script. This is not a drill. All right, everybody, we have another alternate universe script. Uh, everybody, places, places, everybody, get to where you need to be. Uh, kill the alarm. Ms. Schmackelheimer? This is Ms. Schmackelheimer, Ms. Sadie Schmackelheimer. Yes, Ms. Schmackelheimer, you should have that script now. Could you please make a uh, mimeograph copy for everybody? You know what I think of that machine, Mr. Bell? Every other podcast has one of those really nice combination fax scanner copiers, but when I ask for a simple office equipment upgrade, you get Arnie to make our ancient mimeograph machine nuclear-powered. Why would you do that? Well, you know Arnie. He likes to tinker with things. Does the smell bother you? The smell doesn't really bother me that much. I've kind of sort of gotten used to it, but... Oh, wait, you meant the mimeograph, huh? <laughs> Actually, I quite like the smell of mimeograph copies. Hmm, 
It reminds me of my childhood. Oh, excuse me. It's just that I don't like having to wear a lead-lined hazmat suit to make them. I mean, this is really not my color. Silver's not my color. And the whole big suit thing, it's just not showing off my assets to their advantage. Miss Schmackelheimer, Arnie has assured me it's perfectly safe. Would you please make those copies? Fine, Mr. Bell. But if all my hair falls out, it'll be on your head. Well, it certainly won't be on yours. Oh, ha, ha, ha. You are such a riot. You should do a comedy show. I do a comedy show. So you say. Just take care of that, Miss Schmackelheimer. Footsteps, footsteps, footsteps. You know, if you had a video podcast, it wouldn't have to do this footsteps thing, so you could actually see me walking down the hall. But that's a whole other story. He just doesn't understand how hard it is to get supplies for this thing. I have to order from the Museum of Printing History for Pete's sakes. Never mind where the nuclear material comes from. I mean, I don't even want it out. Hi, Miss Schmackelheimer. Billy. Oh, Billy, Billy, thank goodness. Would you mind helping me with this contraption? Sure. Just let me know if you see Mr. Wizard. You know perfectly well that Mr. Wizard got abducted by aliens in a big glowing gold spaceship. Oh. Which I find highly unusual. Oh? People usually say those spaceships are silver, not gold. Oh. Anyway, so can you help me with this stupid listener script? Oh, sorry, huh? It's not the listeners that are stupid. It's, oh, wait, hmm. I probably don't want to say that either. Um, I just don't want to be here any longer than necessary. Cranking her up. Oh, look, the copies glow. Yeah, they tell me that's normal. You can read these things during a blackout. All done. Thanks, Billy. I'll take these up. Where is it down? Hmm. I'll take these to Mr. Bell's office. Gee, it kind of sounds drafty in here all of a sudden. Oh, well. No problem, Miss Schmackelheimer. Any time. Billy, is that you? Uh, Miss Schmackelheimer, did I just hear Billy? Whoops. Mr. Wishard, I was told that you were... Thank goodness you're safe, lad. How did Arnie finally manage to get you back? Back? Back from where? Oh, I didn't notice the goatee, Mr. Wizard. It was awful. I don't like the other universe at all. Everything is just so wrong there. Excuse me? Oh, not you, Miss Schmackelheimer. You're different, and the other Billy was nice and Arnie, but there's just something not right with everyone else, especially the other Mr. Wizard. Wait, what? Other Mr. Wizard? What? When did you grow a goatee? And when did you start wearing lead-lined hazmat suits to work? I know, it makes me feel like a Devo fan run amok. All I need now is an inverted flower pot on my head. Oh, dear. Whip it. Whip it good. This is going to have to stop. I'm afraid, Miss Schmackelheimer, you two have now crossed into a sort of parallel universe. We must get you back before you meet your counterpart. It might be a bit disturbing for you. But first, Billy, you must tell me how this happened. Well, I'm not sure, but it may have had something to do with a nuclear-powered mimeograph machine. Oh, fine. <laughs> you two have your little joke. I'm taking these scripts to Mr. Bell's office. Bye-bye now. Wait! No, I'm too late. Meanwhile, back at the Bat Free... She's taking Miss Schmackelheimer a long time to get those copies. It's not like her to take this long. Miss Schmackelheimer? Miss Schmackelheimer? Hmm, no answer. I better go and see if she's having any problems making those copies. Hello, Mr. Bell. Oh, hi, Brad. Um, have you seen Miss Schmackelheimer? Oh, uh, no, Mr. Bell, but the light in my office dimmed a few minutes ago, so she is making copies. Thanks, Brad. Yep, making those copies. Yep. Look, Brad, it's always exciting talking with you, but mm -hmm. I do have to get these copies back. Uh, oh, yes. Here, walk with me to the copy room. All righty, we'll take a little stroll then. Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell. Hi, Brad. Hi. Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, my instruments just detected the distortion in the space-time continuum that might explain how I got to the other universe last time. It came from the copy room. The copy room? Miss Schmeichelheimer was in there. I sit her in there. Oh, no. Miss Schmeichelheimer's is in the, in the alternate, alternate universe. universe. You say that like it's a bad thing. Wait a minute. Let's not fly off the handle. We don't know she's in the alternate universe for sure, do we? Maybe we should check and see. Maybe we should have a party. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's calm down. Are we not men? Yes, we, we are, are men. Then get into these bright yellow lead-lined hazmat suits and we'll go see. <laughs> Uh, do we have to wear the hats, too? I like them. Yes, wear the hats. What about the guitars and synthesizers? Is that a whip? Never mind those. Let's just go. Into the copy room. Miss Schmackle, hi... Miss Schmackle... Arnie, stop playing with the door. Sorry. Miss Schmackleheimer, are you in here? 
Mr. Bell, look. The mimeograph machine. It's still warm. And glowing. This must be the source of the disturbance. Yeah. How can you tell? Well, it says so in the script, for one thing. Uh, I love that mimeograph smell. <laughs> oh, boy, does that take me back. Say, what if we just make some more copies? No, Brad, don't! Oh, there's a couple of nervous Nellies. What could possibly go... What are we now? Some sort of 80s tribute band? Miss, Miss Schmackelheimer? This is Miss Schmackelheimer, Miss Sadie Schmackelheimer. Miss Schmackelheimer! Paolo, oh, Paolo. Come here, Paolo. Brad, get out. What? Now. I don't understand. Yeah, what's going well, on now? What's your deal here, Miss Ash? No time to argue, Brad. Just get into the hallway. All right, quickly, all right, just quickly. don't pull. Give me that guitar, Arnie. Okay, but... You destroyed the mimeograph machine. If you really wanted one of those fancy copier scanner fax machines, I... You broke my guitar! And the keyboard. Oh, there. That's better. Paolo, come with me. I want you to meet your long-lost twin. Did you know that this is another universe? I think you'll like it better here. I know that I will. So, Paolo... You know what we can do when we were here, the two of us, and your own lost twin? What in the world was all that about? Monsieur Bell, I think she's destroyed the link to the alternate universe! No, you think? Brad? Brad, are you out there? Come on in here, you okay? Brad? 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 Where's Brad? What, what will, will become, become of, of us, us now? This has been episode 63 of Bells in the Bat Free. Thanks very much to uh, Cindy Taylor, who played Miss Schmackelheimer, and Jeff T. Music, who wrote, again, the alternate universe again. And we may have another one again. It's all up to you. We want your suggestions, your responses, your opinions at thebatfree.com's forum. Go to the forum. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. In fact, there's a way you can win $100 if you work up a logo that we're going to use on Bells and the Bat Free. So if you're an artist, go to thebatfree.com and find out what you need to do to win $100. Thank you for listening to Episode 63. See you next time. La la la, you know, if this were video, you could see me turning the pages and scanning. Hello, I'm John Bell of Bells in the Battery, along with my associates, Arnie Kunch. I can introduce myself, thank you very much. All right. Hi, I'm Arnie Kunchbard. That's it? That's it. And also, do you want me to introduce you, Brad? Well, of course, Mr. Bell, that's your job as host. Thank you, Brad. And I'd like to introduce Brad. Hold it. What? Here's your script. Script? <laughs> well, you gotta know what to say. All right. <clears throat> and introducing Brad Montworth, a salesman, incomparable public relations expert, and, of course, unrivaled attorney at law. No, come on, you know how to say it, Mr. Bell. Unrivaled attorney, attorney at, at law. law. Oh, Mr. Bell, you shouldn't say those things. You make me blush. Can I do my introduction over again? No. We're here for an important reason. Very important. Indeed. If you think you deserve significant financial compensation, call Brad Motworth, attorney, attorney at, at law. law. Oh, boy. At 555 No, 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 no. We're here to remind everybody to take steps to avoid the coronavirus. Yeah, don't catch it. Because there's no one you can sue. Wash your hands thoroughly and keep social distancing. What? Social distancing. One more time. Stay about six feet away from everybody else. Right, very good. Oh, I gotta wash my hands thoroughly. I don't want to get me this corona. Ooh, keep your distance now. Socially. I want to keep feeling fine, corona. Never gonna stop getting squirts from my Purell. I'm always gonna buy all the toilet paper that they sell. Bye, 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 bye. Whoa. Bye, corona. Bye, corona. Don't get no closer, huh? Beat it, huh? Far enough where I can't see your eyes, Corona. An illness history is not for me. Uh uh. Don't want to try your COVID on for size, Corona. Never gonna touch. Stay away. My epidermis never wants to be close to where that nasty germ is. Bye, 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 bye. Woo! 
Bye, Corona. Fly, Corona. Captain Bly, Corona. Pumpkin pie, Corona. Now wait a minute. Have a Corona. Goodbye, Corona. Good riddance.